How's it going guys? This is Angus here from Makers Muse coming at you from National Manufacturing Week 2016 here in Sydney. So I'm here at the 3D Printing Systems booth. I'm helping out Bruce out for the trade show, but I'm also going to be going around and checking out some of the awesome things happening here. So we have metal printing, we have massive deltas, we have water jet cutters, fiber lasers, and we even have filament manufacturers like eSun. So it's going to be pretty awesome. Let's get stuck into it. Welcome back to Makers Muse guys. So as I said, I'm here at National Manufacturing Week 2016 and I have behind me the Up Mini 2. So heaps of you have been super keen to learn more about this little machine. It's the successor to the ever popular Up Mini, which I mean, I've got two of them. It was my first ever 3D printer. The original one's still going. And the Up Mini 2 promises to deliver on that same high quality machine, but with updated features. So as you can tell, it kind of looks like an appliance. They've gone with this massive sort of white case, glossy, super glossy, and this handle, pretty cool. Uh, AJ here is just adding some files in, I don't know if you can see him on camera, it's probably you slightly off. <laughs> uh, and one of the major improvements is the touch screen at the front, so now you can load filament, get old files, uh, connect to Wi-Fi, all through the interface, and yes, did I say Wi-Fi, it's now Wi-Fi enabled through the new Up Studio. The Up Studio needs a little bit of work to become as good as the old Up software, but it's getting there. And yeah, it's basically going to match the same price point from what I understand as the original Up Mini. So these are going to be super popular, I have no doubt about that. Same build volume of 120 by 120, 120. So it's quite a small printer, but in my opinion, the best build volume you should get if you're just starting out in 3D printing. Cool, let's move on. Hey guys, so I'm here with Lee from Bilby 3D and we're having a quick look at the FlashForge Finder because all of you have been asking how quiet it is. So Lee, can you fill me in on this? Because I can't actually hear it at you all. You can't hear it at the expo at all. Okay, so we've got some background noise, but we've actually measured this and it averages about 22 decibels. To put that in perspective, that's a quiet whisper. When we were actually testing this, we had it in our lounge room at home and we all kept thinking it had broken down because we couldn't hear it and you'd turn around and go, no, it is printing. Yeah, like, I, that's insane. I, <laughs> I, do you know how they've done it or it's, magic? It's actually really good mechanics if, okay. if you want to look at it that way. Um, the motors are all put behind barriers that allow that noise to be basically Sweet. insulated. Yeah. You've got insulated walling wherever there's those mechanical parts. So that gives you a really soundproof movement yep. coupled with, I've got to tell you, the most smooth movement I've ever seen in a 3D printer. That's very cool. Really impressed by this. Yeah, I mean, it's and not even vibrating much. It doesn't it's... vibrate pretty much at all. And the bed is super, super solid. So even during this print, I can try and wiggle yeah. that yeah. and it won't move. So in terms of the print volume, it's not uh, too big, but it's not bad. We're looking at a 140 millimeter cube, yep. uh, which isn't too bad. Uh, it's a glass plate, so it's really solid. It's not going to warp or, or awesome. change over time, which is fantastic. It's so, a it's a non-heated bed, isn't it? So it's PLA it only? It's a non-heated yeah. bed. We've done PLA. We've done our... Um, you can do metals on this. So we've okay. done aluminium, bronze, stainless steel the color on this. Uh, and the protopasta. And the protopasta, yeah. All we did is we've got a uh, $80 upgrade kit, which basically okay. upgrades that barrel and nozzle to a toughened system. Okay. And then you can run the metals through this without any problem. So we've done wood, copper, alley, stainless steel, carbon Is that, is that the Micro Swiss upgrade? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. they're super popular. Yeah, yeah. and they are. <laughs> The only things you can't do, you know, is uh, ABS, obviously, because it really wants that It wants to it shrinks, yeah. And I wouldn't be going nylon on a machine like this, right? Most machines still can't do nylon no. anyway. So. And so, aside from that, pretty much anything we throw at this machine, it has been able to deal with. <laughs> That's fantastic. Maybe. Cool. So, All right. Super impressed. Under $1,000. Yeah. Uh, just over $1,000, sorry. With more AUD. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, Lee. <laughs> Have a good expo. Thanks. And next, I couldn't help checking out this. This is Polymaker PC Plus, which is a polycarbonate filament you can print on your 3D printer. And yes, you're looking correctly. It comes with a sheet of BuildTac because it's so hard to print. But it prints really well in the up box and this entire car jack was done in it and can hold up 240 kilos. 
So to test and prove it, I asked AJ over at the 3D printing systems booth to stand on it. I mean, he weighs less than like a quarter of the tested weight. So yeah, it's really no surprise that it could hold him fine. But it was really interesting to see an FDM part on a consumer 3D printer hold up a person like that. So yeah, if you want to do high strength parts, you want to get some of this Polymaker PC Plus. Next, I caught up with the guys at Trotec. So Trotec make fiber and CO2 laser cutters and engravers. So I've never seen a fiber laser in my life actually in operation and I was so <laughs> blown away by how fast these things can mark metal. I mean, I used to work at a laser cutting company with a cheap Chinese CO2 laser. This thing is something else. So, I mean, this is not sped up. It is real time. Just listen to the sound it makes. But I mean, this is their CO2 laser system. So it has a CO2 and a fiber in the same system. And that's like the gantry moving, not even sped up. So yeah, in terms of laser cutters, Trotec have some pretty <laughs> impressive machines, but they do start at around $60,000. I got along really well with the guys at Trotec. So I'm probably gonna be doing some future projects with them actually. And yeah, I could not leave their store without getting a custom Maker's Muse thing engraved. And we have the IronScan Pro from Shiny3D. So this scanner is really, really cool because it can be used in a handheld configuration for scanning things like large objects or people, or you can use it on a tripod and using even a turntable to capture high detail automatically. So it has various functions which have different accuracy levels. It can go down to 0.05 millimeter accuracy using the automatic turntable or 0.3 if you use the feature line, which is these little dots you stick on the part and it can scan up to four meters long if you are so inclined. Or you can align the scans using features if the part has enough features for the scanner to recognize. The IronScan Pro goes for around $6,000 and the turntable is extra, but it's a pretty attractive 3D scanning option for small engineering or industrial design firms in my opinion. But it's also pretty funny to note that the green 3D printed dinosaur was actually stolen midway through the trade show, yeah. And I was super happy to see that Highwind were there. So Highwind make motion components like ball screws, linear rails and robotics. So if you've made a 3D printer before or you've ripped open a 3D printer, you've probably seen some of their products. So their ball screws on display were just crazy from tiny ones all the way up to humongous things, absolutely insane. And in terms of the linear slides, you know, they had all sorts of ones from quite large linear slides you'd find in things like machining centers all the way down to this little fella. I kind of wanted to take him home. And there was metal 3D printers. So I was so busy, I only got to take photos of the SLM Solutions booth, but they actually had prints in aluminium, which I thought was really, really interesting because I never thought you could actually 3D print that as a metal, but they had all kinds of different types and the surface finish was phenomenal. So in terms of the 3D printing metal industry maturing, I think it's actually finally happened and it's really cool to see. Next, I caught up with the guys at eSun. So it's no lie that I quite like eSun filament. It's very low cost, but quite high quality in my experiences with it. And I actually caught, got to catch up with the CEO of eSun, Kevin. And he's a really, really nice guy. And we had a bit of a chat. So, you know, you might be familiar with eSun for like ABS or PLA plastics. They do have a new PLA plus material, which is stronger and prints better. And you also, you might be familiar with these metal like filaments that a lot of these manufacturers produce, but eSun now has proper metal filled PLA. PLAs like this steel PLA which will rust and is magnetic, this copper PLA that's been finished. So these are basically the same sort of materials that Colorfab make but now eSun is also producing them. They had a nice semi-flex as well, you know, not too flexible that it would cause problems with extruders and the carbon fiber and polyamide mix really got my attention. It's gonna be hard to print but wow it's gonna be strong. And last but certainly not least, I caught up with Cobus and the Gizmo 3D. He actually had his prototype functioning at the trade shows. So yes, for those people who are worried this machine does not work, I watched it work before my eyes. So there's a few caveats. He was printing with no sort of infill, so just single outline walls. And he was printing quite slowly and safely to make sure there wasn't any real failures. But the print quality definitely was very, very good. And yes, it is a resin based system, so it is messy and there was a lot of resin around, but in terms of the print quality, I was very impressed with what he was getting off it. So the prints were being done with a single shell and no infill, so they were quite brittle, but the quality of the surface finish was pretty impressive. So there you have it guys, that's wrapping up National Manufacturing Week for 2016. So I need to do a special massive shout out to 3D Printing Systems for getting me here to the show and a huge shout out to Rode for providing me with this interviewer's microphone. 
massive thanks to you guys. I couldn't have done this without your help. So, yeah, tell me what you think in the comments, guys. I mean, you know, this, this stuff here is nuts. I mean, a water jet cutter in the Sydney Olympic Park is just mind-blowing. And if you haven't seen any of my videos before, guys, I do 3D printing content all the time, 3D printing reviews, tips and tricks, all that sort of thing here on YouTube. And I would absolutely love for you to jump on board and subscribe. So click that button so you can subscribe. It helps me out a huge amount. I love doing this kind of thing. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later.